I eat three meals, you're selling BPA craftsman. All right. Um, I had a request from a client that I thought I would share. And, um, and there may be better ways to do it, but I, this is the way I handle it. Now, the client, um, I produced a bunch of documents from a database, Word documents from a database, that we slice and dice the information a number of ways, right? And I, I can't show you that, but I can show you how the the pro what the problem was and how how I resolved it. And there may be a better way. I don't know. But I thought it was interesting. Anyway, um, their documents are very dense, right? So edge to edge, edge to edge text, right? It's just it's just completely full, lots of columns, all sorts of neat stuff. Very tricky. You add something and then you end up having to tweak it, you know, for twenty minutes just to get it to fit it all on one page, and that's the critical thing. It needs to fit page by page, right? And we report so many different ways, and there are a number of different documents, right? So the client came back and said, "You know, I'm trying to add." page numbers because a couple of our clients had asked for it and I'm running into problems with formatting. So I thought about it a bit and I said, all right, how about we do something a little different? And it's really simple, right? So let's, let's for, for our demonstration purposes, let's say this is our document, right? That, and it was very dense and all that. And I see I've only made the half an inch he header, I mean margin, top margin, right? So let's just say, let's say insert and let's insert a shape. Let's see if we can, I'm going to drag this over so we can have some more space. Shapes. And let's use a text box, okay? And I'm going to put it right here. Okay. And I'm going to put a 1 in there, right? So now let's go back to our normal size that we need because I want to show you the uh, DBE in Visual Basic Editor and how we work through this. So now this text box, I don't know its name, but I know we've added a text box. And this is the layout box, right? So if you click on this, you're going to get a bunch of choices. I like this for now, and I like move with text, right? So this means if it kind of interferes with something, it should write over it. Not, so if there was a margin box or a text box or whatever, it, it, it might sort of ignore it. So you can play with this, choose what works best in your situation, but it may take advantage of it, okay? So I'm just going to stick it over here in the corner, and I think in here to the left, left upper left corner, or the bottom right corner might be the answer in her case, and I, I showed her how to use it, so she can go forward with that. Okay, so let's ignore this for now, okay? So the first part of it is, now we have a one here, right? And this is, I should say that her documents are templates, right? So the template gets filled with by my code after uh, it just grabs it, fills it, and then goes to the next page, grabs it, fills it, and keeps, keeps creating page after page, right? So the first thing I needed to do was, I need to know what the name of that text box was. So... I wasn't too sure, and I want to reassign the name of that text box, right? So here's my code over here. And just make sure that your immediate window is showing, right? So it says, let's just walk through it. Dim shape is shape, and I know that I added I as I-N-T-E-G-E-R, okay? For completeness, right? We don't want to have anything in here. We, we see the SPG as a string, right? So that's being passed here, okay? So, oh, maybe I got the wrong one. Okay, I do. Okay, so again... So we have I as in INTG code. Don't worry, we're going to go back to that other piece of code in a minute. So dim shape is shape. I is integer, right, with active document for I equals 1 to shapes count, okay? And then I do a debug print because I want to see the shape, right? So let's just make this 22 or 1. So we know that we're getting the right one. We can make this something whatever we want. You know, 2, I don't know. Oh, well, well anyway, well... Let's leave it at one for now. Why am I doing that? Two, two. Oh, it might not be big enough. Okay. So let's leave it at, let's leave it at, oh, I don't know, one again. I guess. For now, we'll leave it as one. But there's only one on this page, right? So we're just going to pay attention to that in case there's more than one. So let's just run it and see what happens, right? So I say I start running it, F8. Now, you could run this twice, but I'm going to do it all in one step. So it says debug print the shape name, right? Well, it looks like so text box 3 and the value ended up being 121, right? So it really doesn't matter what the value is at this point, right? So let's go on. But we should pay attention to that might not fit two, two values, but we'll, we'll see. In other words, the space might be big enough where it goes to page 11, 12, whatever. So we'll, we'll, uh, we can play with that. So let, we'll make it a little larger. But, so it's text box 3, right? So if shapes names equals text box three, I want to rename that text box because uh, we know it's shape six because it's 
the only text box on here. I want to rename that text box my page number. Let's see what happens. So now it's renamed, and there are no other text boxes. So we know the name of this text box. Now one step is done, now we can move on to the next thing. Okay. In this, I know the shape. I know the the shape name is my page number because I just created that, right? So what this does is if I pass it a variable for a string for, it'll set the page. So when you're creating your templates, you would just pass a little, you would just create a little uh, 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 a call to this function, essentially to this subroutine we're using this function, and we were going to send it the page number we want it to be. Well, we know the page number at any, any given point in the active page because we can ask Word what, what it is, right? So when, I am, when I'm actually copying over and putting these new page numbers in, I update them by having a call. Now, I don't use this in particular because I'm running it from Excel, but I'm just demoing it here. So let's, let's demo it. So we know it should be my page number. Let's run it. So let's walk through this, step through it, F8, F8. With active document, shape's name is my, it's my page number. Oh, did you see? It's now page number now updated to four. So this, what I like about it is, you know, you could stick it anywhere, right? So I'm going to just show you something here that's just kind of nice. Let's just say it was in the middle of the page, right? I'm going to go here, and I'm going to say I like this guy here, right? So that kind of wrapped around it a little bit, right? Let's kill that, right? Let's kill this. So let's just make it 22. Let's just make it 9. So you could, in theory, right, have it in the middle of the page just that's kind of something, it's just your option, whatever works for you, but you can stick it anywhere, and I'll demonstrate it again. So let's run it, just show if it goes to page 9, I'm sure it will. It's code proven. And boom, boom, boom. And look, it changed to 9. Okay, so you could just, like I said, you could stick this code in anywhere, and guess what? You have a, what I call a floating page number. Okay? So Ray Mills, Excel and VBA Craftsman. If you have problems with Excel or a question about VBA, give me a call. Thanks.